Hey, shalom everyone. This is Chris Shoemaker, also known as Yehuda Ben Shomer, and welcome to the Daily Drosh. Today's Daily Drosh, I want to answer a question that has been asked uh, of me many times regarding the, the Passover. Uh, it, people ask, well, if you have to be circumcised to partake of the Passover lamb, then why are Gentiles, non-circumcised people, people that are not part of the Abrahamic Mosaic Covenant, why are they allowed to come to the Passover Seder, the Passover meal, the Passover celebration? Uh, because in Exodus, uh, the requirements uh, in order to participate in the Passover, uh, specifically the Passover lamb, is that one must be circumcised. And so this question is often asked, and it's an easy, easy question, because first of all, we no longer eat the Passover lamb during Passover, and that is because there is no standing temple in Jerusalem. There is no operational working Levitical priesthood uh, to sacrifice the Passover lamb. So because the temple was destroyed in 70 AD, we no longer have a literal Passover lamb at the table. It is represented by a lamb shank bone on the Seder plate. So a lot of times, uh, lamb is not even served at a Passover Seder. Usually it'll be chicken or beef or, or something uh, of that nature. Uh, and since there is no Passover lamb, uh, we don't have to worry about somebody uncircumcised being present there because they're not going to accidentally eat the Passover lamb because there is none. Second of all, um, there is no prohibition against uh, Gentiles or non-Jewish, non-circumcised covenant people to attend the Passover Seder. The prohibition is simply that they can't partake of the Passover lamb. So even if we did have a Passover lamb, uh, they could still come and participate uh, but they wouldn't be um, able to actually eat the Passover lamb. But since there's no Passover lamb, there's no worry about it whatsoever. You can kind of look at it um, as um, a citizen and a permanent resident. A citizen is allowed to vote, but a permanent resident has all the rights of a citizen except that they can't vote. Uh, so, um, you know, if, if there is a sojourner uh, among Israel or somebody that, that believes in the God of Israel or attaches themselves to the God of Israel, they can attend a Passover Seder. They just can't eat the Passover lamb, lamb itself. And so back in the day, we know that there was a mixed multitude that came out of uh, Egypt with Israel and accepted the Torah upon themselves and attached themselves to the nation of Israel and to the God of Israel, they were considered to be part of the commonwealth of Israel. So uh, they may not have necessarily been converts, but yet they were Torah obedient and they followed the God of Israel. Uh, the only thing that separated them from their Jewish counterparts, their Hebraic counterparts, is that they did not go through the process of circumcision or conversion for a female through a ritual immersion. And so uh, they were allowed to participate in the uh, Passover because it was just as much for them as it was for the children of Israel, with the only exception that they could not actually eat the Passover lamb that was sacrificed at the tabernacle or temple by the Levitical priesthood. But since we don't do that anymore because there is no standing to in Jerusalem because it was destroyed in 70 AD, because we no longer serve lamb at the Passover, and because we don't live in Jerusalem and there's no uh, Levitical priesthood to sacrifice the Passover lamb, we don't worry about who comes to the Passover Seder. They're allowed to come and participate in the celebration because if they attach themselves to the God of Israel and they believe in the God of Israel, follow the God of Israel, it's, it's as much as their celebration as it is um, as it is the, the Jews and the Hebrews. After all, what is it called in Leviticus 23? It is called a feast of the Lord. It's not called a feast of the Jews. It's not called a feast of the Hebrews. It's called a feast of the Lord, which meant that anybody that is attached to the Lord of Israel, to the God of Israel, it's their feast too. So anyways, hopefully this, answered, uh, this uh, answers this question that's often been asked, and you may have even thought of yourself. Thanks for listening. Shalom and Shavua Tov. Abrahamsdescendants.com, getting back to the first century in a 21st century way. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press the like button as well as the subscribe button if you haven't done so already and the notification bell that'll let you know every time I make a new video. 
And don't forget to share this with a friend. Also, visit our website at abrahamsdescendants.com. Thanks. Shalom. Thanks for watching. Stay connected by subscribing to our other social media accounts and visiting our website at abrahamsdescendants.com.